So I'm going to be talking about building uh, your team's defense and I'm going to talk about how we do it and just somehow we tie it all the way into from, from our philosophy, from our, our program philosophy to our core values and everything like that, how it's all tied in. So before I get started, I want to just talk a little bit about our program, our program's philosophy. So we're trying to coach, um, players in all three different aspects of life, you know, the personal, academic, and basketball. And then we want them to grow into young adults that can, you know, survive in the real world. And we're able to do it through basketball, but we're also, that's not the sole reason that, um, you know, I coach and I coach to try and develop in all aspects for them and, and help them along the way. And, through that, we, we try and do it through our core values. And, you know, there's many different ones that are out there, but this is for our program. What we we kind of, we, we use all these and we tie it back into our defensive philosophy as well. So it's kind of like do what's right. Um, and they're getting older and they're, they're at that age where now they, they've, you know, learned a little bit and they have some experience of knowing what's right, knowing what's wrong. Obviously, we have to guide them through that at times when they're, you know, we think they're making mistakes. Uh, um, but it's more of a guidance uh, for them. And then we want to be honest. So honest, are they giving their best effort, you know, in the classroom, you know, are they, you know, doing what they're kind of supposed to be. And then they're also honest, honest relationships with the coaches and player to player relationships as well. So, and then we want to make sure that we're, we're, we're treating each, each and everyone with respect, care and concern from, from coaches down to athletics, to athletic directors, to their profs, to the students on campus, uh, and then to each other that they're not just, um, you know, they're not just worried about the person as a player. It's more about off the court as well. And then we want to make sure that we're doing our jobs. Um, and that could be as simple as, you know, uh, boxing out, uh, but also doing our jobs is to the coaches as well that, you know, we're, having our team as prepared as we possibly can to play and no days off with uh, why, what we mean by that. Um, there could be days off physically, but mentally we, we also want to make sure that on our physical days off that they're, you know, diving into the schoolwork, you know, personal relationships, they're working on those days. And then the last thing is trust. Um, just constantly building that trust. And that's all through, uh, the relationships that we have. Um, and then our defense is built on, uh, on this hard hat. So it's, it's been with me for 17 years. Um, and it's, it was about a month into my first coaching experience. <laughs> I finished playing and then I became a head coach and my father's been with me, uh, you know, every year up until this year with, uh, me taking a job in another city so he couldn't be there but probably a month into our first season he's like hey our, our team's not playing with you know they're not just tough they're not working hard so he brought in uh this hard hat and uh it's been with us for 17 years and everything we do defensively is kind of based around that um you know my dad worked in the farms when he was a kid he worked construction worked multiple jobs probably the hardest working guy person I know so it becomes more of our staple and a purpose to why we play defense so it's you know it's not just a hard hat where you know different teams um there's some meaning to it um and some value I think and so before our practices every single day we have our players check in to work so they they have to touch in and they have to check in so that they check in to work for two hours they kind of forget about everything else. And it's, it's now it's about doing our jobs. And, uh, you know, so I stand right beside every day, they check in, I give them knocks, they give me knocks, every coach checks in. And then for two hours, we're, we're working. And if you're not ready to check in to work, you don't check in. Um, so mentally, you know, guy could be coming from class stuff going on, they take a couple minutes before practice and get themselves right. And then we we start and then uh, so it's been good but so what we have is a golden rule defensively so um, it's about communication loud constant and early 
So the main thing is we want to be as loud as we can. Uh, we want to be constant and we want to have early communication. And it's obviously in the defensive mindset of our team, we're, we're trying to build this every day in every drill and everything. But then we relate it back to um, our core values and, you know, trying to make our players, you know, if there's, they're struggling with a class, they've got to make sure that they're communicating to their prof and it's early so that they can get a tutor, they can, you know, be successful in that class. So it's, it, there's always the constant communication, not just on the defensive side of the floor, but everything we're doing. So we, we try and use defensive ideas and philosophy, but also our program philosophy. And um, so these are some things that we really need, we stress in everything that we're doing. Um, and then why we communicate um it is a big thing i think players nowadays need need to know the why like why am i doing this what, what is the purpose you know so there's many different whys of why you communicate and we we put five you know we think uh it helps catch mistakes so you'll see through how we want to play like I, i'm more about trying to get the maximum effort out of our guys than so much tactical and technical on the defensive end we want them to play as hard as they can for as long as they can i've been uh i've had some teams that we haven't been the most talented so we've had to to battle and this has kind of been one of the ways you know we try and play as hard as we can so it catches mistakes if we're communicating early and then it gives a head start so to, to our defense. So we want to give ourselves the best chance to minimize the team's offense. And it gives us a head start to their play. And then I believe it builds a, an energy. So if one person's talking, it, it, it's chain reaction. The next person talks, the next person. And then it's building that energy so that we're trying to play as a, a fist. And it brings togetherness of um, you know, we're, we're, we're one unit trying to play defense and not one guy. It's more of five guys. And then it builds the trust. So we get into the trust factor of uh, trust that your help's going to be there, trust that the guy's going to keep the ball in front of them. And these are all the reasons. But for, for us, this is, there's many more that you could have, but these are ones that we stress all the time. Um, and then we have musts. So... Uh, well, you know, we have the golden rule, and these are musts that to, for us to, to be a good defensive team, we think you, you got to have maximum effort. We need you to, as long as we can, um, sometimes it's three quarters, and that's all we can muster up that day. Sometimes it's four quarters, and, and we're great. And then we want to sprint and shrink. We, we don't want to give any rhythm threes and no layups. So, and we want to force contested twos. Uh, we want to force teams into charges, gang rebound, and know our scout. So I'm going to have some videos of kind of what this would look like. Um, and with the maximum effort here, um, we'll have those, you know, so we'll have our max effort. We want to sprint, shrink, no rhythm threes, contested twos, force teams into charges. Um, rebound and know our scout and then we kind of start to break it down into on the ball off the ball post defense ball screen defense um so on the ball we're we're, we're a baseline uh no middle team force baseline influence baseline force weak up the top at the you know 90 we call it so on the ball we're trying to trace the ball we don't really want to gamble uh we want to influence baseline or weak we don't want blow buys and we're, we're guarding our yard. And what we mean by that is guarding the first one, two dribbles as, as best as we can. Um, and, you know, so we spend a lot of time on, on closeouts. And then when we're in help, we talk about the three S's, uh, shrink and sprint. We consider the same stunt and step up. So sprint and shrink, we talk about, you know, let our position be your help. So we want our guys starting in the help. We're kind of more in the gaps. Um, and then we're stunting. And what we mean by one, uh, a stunt is one foot, one hand. 
So you have to be able to stunt one foot, one hand, and we believe that's, uh, you know, it's, it's enough. And we call it fat, so fake at the threat, um, the guy with the ball, and, and we have some drills to work on that later. And then what we, we say by step up, so we need someone to step up, first help and second help. So we're actually, you know, if you heard us playing, we're, we're, we're saying first help, I'm first, I'm first. And then we have our second help saying I'm second, I'm second. Um, post defense, um, we talk about doing work early, three quarter front the post, no easy catches. And then we don't wanna make bad players, good players. So we don't full front, we three quarter front because we don't want to give up a bad player getting offensive rebounding position if we full front. So, um, and then on the ball screens, we're talking about, we can't let anyone score on the first pass or off the screen. Um, so we're trying to make them pass multiple times and hopefully we can scramble out of it and, and do a good job. And then it's five guys guarding the ball screen. So we're really spending five guys, not just one guy covering a ball screen or two. And then finishing our defenses with the effort. Uh, we want to hit first. We want to pursue with two hands. And then we talk about our guards of touch, feel, go. So uh, on the perimeter, we, we want them just to forearm, touch them, feel if they're going to, they're, they're going to the rim, and then they go and, and uh, attack the rim for the rebound. And then – we also talk about what is a force contested to. So what do we want? We, we say force contested to. So try and give them an analogy of no middle, no paint. And it's a house and we have a nice fence. So we want to keep the, you know, the neighborhood kids off our fence and breaking our fence. And so we try and keep them off the three point line. And then we want to contain them in our yard uh, and not let them in the house. So we try and I uh, use that analogy for, for all the players to, to see that, hey, it's okay if they're in our yard, they're not going to do that much damage. But if they get in our house and get to the paint, we're in big trouble. And then we want to try and take away teams' first actions. And it's all about trust in the end. Um, I don't know if I'm going too fast or <laughs> if everything's okay. Or... No, you're good so far. If there's any. Okay, any perfect. So. Jump in, but you're good. Okay, perfect. So now we're going to show uh, some, uh, some clips here. And this is what I think max effort would look like. So this is a clip that we would show our team of, hey, this is max effort. Um, so it's talking about, uh, we know the scout. Um, we take away their first action. We're guarding the ball. And in this possession here, so we're taking, they go dribble handoff and double screen at the top but we're switching now little to big and we're, we do a really good job of guarding the yard here. And then we have a little on a big, and this is for us, we believe it's, it's the max effort, you know, because we, we knew, we knew the scout. We, we if you could hear volume, we're actually communicating. We're, you know, we're, we're guarding our yard where, um, here he, he does a good job of not getting he wins that first yard of uh, on the dribble here so I never really get into the paint and we've done a good job of shrinking and so for us we believe this is you know a good max effort you know five guys doing a good job of what we want on the defensive end and then we talk about uh, no threes and no layups. Um, and we were switching post to post here on the cross screen. And um, your best player gets it. And I think we do a really good job of, of shrinking the floor. And then no rhythm threes. But then our defense kind of breaks down. But we make up for it. So here, so this is their best player. He averages 20 a game for the last – you know, three or four years. So we've done a good job shrinking the floor, not getting hit on the screen. And now we do a good job of no rhythm threes. So after the kick out. So here he takes away the three, no rhythm, but now he's getting middle. 
So ideally we want him to go baseline, but this isn't great individual defense, but we make up for it on this possession here. Um, and this is why we stress the max effort we need. You know, there's going to be some mistakes, but then we, we do a great job of Danny steps up here. And now, you know, our guard and our other posts are coming in, crashing, picking up first and second help. So even though we made the mistake, we can live, not live, you know, we live with those mistakes because we can make up for it with the max effort. Um, sprinting and shrinking, uh, shrinking the floor, we did a good job of that. But it was, um, you know, we, we didn't want to give up the three and no layup. So that was huge for us. And then we'll talk about in our defense about one way helps. So we always talk about let our position be our help. And what do we mean by that? And uh, we, we talk about being off your man one step and two steps to the ball in that gap. And then knowing your scout. And, you know, so that we do a good job of sprinting here and, and then getting back and shrinking. And we actually take another charge. So. Um, Here, this is their leading scorer again. So we're trying to shrink the floor um, and be, so Danny, you know, gets back here and levels, you know, at the screen. And we, we do a pretty good job of shrinking and getting back. And then this is knowing our scout. So Danny does a good job here. This, this guy's not a great shooter. So, you know, in our scout, we talked about, hey, if he's 45, we can, we can be in that gap a little bit more and see if we can make the score give it up early and then so it's you know ideally that's not our rotation but because of scout we have adjusted if he's 45 um and then our bottom low man would be stunting at the bottom if, down here. So if we get to this point here, he would stunt and then recover and then Danny would get back. But we know he's not a great shooter, so we can give some help. And then we're trying to force teams into charges. So, you know, I'm not getting in, I'm trying to give an overview of all our defense. Um, and here we don't want to ever get hit by screens. So we'll, a lot of times we'll tell guys good players don't get hit by screens. They probably know the scout. They know the action that's coming. Um, and on this coverage, um, it's a hedge. Um, so we're, we're over and under, and we don't want to get hit with the ball screen. So our point guard would go over the screen and then under our man hedging. Um, and then we, we kind of force it weak. It's kind of in a gray area for us that we want to really square more than influence baseline. And we get beat uh, middle, and, but we step up again. So here our guard does a good job of getting over the screen. We have the hedge. And now he's going to get back under. And we're taking away the passing angles. Right here. Oh, I knew it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> uh, so we do a good job if we can uh, on our guard here getting over and then under. And then here he's their leading scorer again. So we're trying to pressure him off the three. So we don't want to give up, you know, back to, you know, they can't score off the first pass of it. Uh, and he's made a couple this game. So we're a little tight. And this is that area that's, I don't know if they can see my. My cursor? Yeah, you can see it. Yeah. Yeah. So here is what we call square. And we really want to, like, not influence, trying to influence baseline. But if he was a little bit up closer to the mid midcourt line here, uh, center line, we would be forcing it weak. So he kind of does an all right job. But then our post uh, steps up here. And this is our last game of the season and 40 seconds left in a – one point game we end up winning um and we we end up taking the charge so it's that max effort that we're really trying to enforce that hey yeah we got to be there we've worked on our rotations we want to help from the weak side and and then we step up and 
you know, it's a big play for us, but we're, we're always trying to force guys into charges and get them out of the, you know, what they want to do more. And that's more about our scout. Uh, and that's kind of, and then the, one of the last things we'll talk, you know, our gang rebounding. Um, and this is where, you know, we believe five guys have to rebound, not just one. And it's, you know, our guards got to rebound. You have to rebound out of your area. You got to try and keep the ball alive. And we do a good job here of forcing a tough, tough two. And then we kind of tip it around and then we're, you know, for us, you know, we want to make sure five guys are gang rebounding. Um, always trying to defense a rebound. No one's leaking out. We're trying to have our guards in there. And we do a pretty good job um, putting contact on the guys. And then I'm going to talk a little uh, transition defense. Um, you know, and it starts with our sh shot selection. We, you know, it's not just after the shot going into our transition defense. So we want to make sure that our shot, our shot, we're getting the shots kind of we want. And then now we're able to transition out because we know where it's really coming from. And then our first three steps. So we talked to them a lot about our first three steps back or three steps to the glass. You, you, you can't be one of those guys floating. I'm going to get back. I'm going to rebound. Like we're either going to the glass or we're getting back. And we got to make sure we're declaring the ball. Um, you know, we're picking up ball. It's mine. Trying to sprint down the middle of the floor, clogging it. Uh, we want to protect the basket, uh, pick up at the three-point line, try and stop the ball at the three-point line. And then our littles or our smalls probably had their big, so we're trying to switch that out. But we're trying to get our big, our guards to bump, bump the bigs, and then the last guy is pointing and talking so uh and going opposite the ball instead of going strong side so this is uh, we'll talk about you know contesting sprinting back the last guy in our transition you can see we're trying to so we know we're getting the shot so we have guys getting back already and now our last guy is pointing so here he was pointing to his check he's getting back opposite the ball and now we're able to contest and shrink the floor and get them into a tough shot so you know we want to make sure that we're sprinting back our first three steps are really important to what we're doing we're trying to pick up the ball as soon as we can and we're getting down the middle so here we do a great job of you know, not <laughs> Offensively, not the shot or the pass that we want uh, here, but we do it, we make up for it. So it's, it's kind of the max effort, the hard hat, where we do a great job of stop picking up the ball in transition here and not allowing them to advance. We got back with our big pointing. So our big man, he's getting back. He's a little out of shape, but he's getting back and he bumps and bumps out the guard and now they have an attacked in transition off one of our turnovers. So, and now we're into our coverage again. Sorry. <laughs> and then now we're into another ball, ball screen coverage, but it starts with, we do a good job of, you know, our first three steps of getting back, stopping the ball down the middle, last guy's pointing, bumping out. And now you know, they're into 13 seconds into their offense where now they haven't gotten anything out of it. And then we were tagging from the single side on this roll. So, you know, we're able to get back into our matchups and we're still able to defend the way we wanted to. Um, and then now into, you know, kind of, you know, our, our drills and some of the things I'm going to show how we kind of now implement it. But one of the things I'd like to talk about before that is kind of, our O board charge in practice. So it's, it's kind of our scoring system that we use to kind of emphasize, you know, charges and a defensive mindset and, and, and trusting, you know, in the togetherness. So in practice, I believe how you practice is how you're going to play. Um, so we're always pushing our guys to be competitive and to compete. And um, 
years ago when I first started, we'd do a drill and we'd give up an offensive rebound. And then I'd blow the whistle and say, we gave up an offensive rebound, stop, you know, and I wouldn't let the, the possession happen. Um, so now every drill and everything that we're doing, it's the same scoring system all the time. So it's, uh, we give a point for a uh, stop and then a shot clock violation will give uh, three points and then a charge is worth five. But then what happens is if we give up an O board, that offensive team gets three points plus whatever they get out of it. So if they get a foul, it's two. If they hit a three, it's a six point possession. If they get another O board, it's three points. So instead of doing all these rebounding drills, we emphasize, hey, we have to make sure we're boxing out because you could lose a game on an offensive rebound. And we value that as three points plus whatever they get. But if you get an O, if they get an O board and you turn them over, it's a redo. So it's working on that. Yeah, we didn't do our jobs. What we talked about in our, you know, our philosophy and our core values, we didn't do our job because we didn't box out, but you know, we, we didn't give up. We, we found a way to, so it'd be a redo. And then also the old board to a charge, we give the defense three points. And, and then going through and watching some of our film this year, we actually do this quite a bit. And I was surprised of how many times that we give up an old board and then take a charge. Um, it was surprising to me. So it was one thing that I think transferred from our practice to our game, which, which I think is uh, really important for people and teams to have. So here we don't do a good job. <laughs> we give up the old board, but we don't quit on the play. And then we're able to stand in and, and then what later on in our, in a next time out, I can get on our guys about, Hey, your effort, you know, your max effort wasn't good because we gave up the rebound and I can get on them, but then I can come back and be like, Hey, we didn't quit. So there's, you know, kind of that sandwich mentality, you know, positive, negative, positive. So I'm trying to use that. Um, and then we do it again and it's part of our transition and, um, you know, maybe not the shot we want, you know, no penetration, but then we're sprinting back and we're giving ourselves a chance again. And then we take another one. <laughs> so, um, this is just something that, you know, we started to realize that we actually do in practice and, you know, in practice, we're trying to get them to do that. So how we now the, the drills that we kind of, at first when I was going to do this presentation, I started talking about with some friends and some coaches and I was going to be like, I just want to show all these drills and this is how we build it. And this is what we do. But I thought some of that stuff is more important because we tie it all into our core values, our trust, our energy. And it's kind of been our, you know, the, the mentality of our team. And it's, you know, we've had some success with that. And we started every single practice this year with, uh, we called it sword fighting. And it was partner up with someone and you, you touch hands. We've believed that being connected and physically touching and hand holding is, it starts our defense and it builds that trust. And it's, it's working on our closeouts. And our closeouts, we have three different types. So we call uh, Allen, Wade, and Rondo. So Allen is, you know, Ray Allen. Uh, Dwayne Wade is the slasher, mid-range, can do a little bit of both. And then Rondo, the non-shooter. So here, we're going to partner up, and we're going to actually work on our closeout. So we did this every day. Um, and it and build it started with our communication loud constant and early and we wanted to have that theme every single day and we only spend a couple minutes on this two three minutes max and it's just partner up and they and our energy starts high and we're working on the fundamentals of the closeout working on getting back to the gap and then then we build it up to what we call triangle closeouts so one on oh triangle closeouts and this is where we're working on sprinting three quarter of the way, high active hands, chopping your feet. We're trying to influence uh, baseline. And then we're trying to influence weak up top. And, and then we'll just have coaches, you know, with balls if we have them. 
if we don't have coaches, we'll just put pylons. If we have injured players, we have injured players doing it. And each line will be, we'll say this is a Rondo, and then this is Allen, and then this is Wade. And then the slide is, you know, first dribble, trying to influence baseline, and then they cross over, you cut them back, and then they cross back over to a jump shot, and then you imaginary box out and go and grab the rebound. So we don't do this. We do this probably another five, six minutes. And so our first six, seven minutes of practice is just uh, fundamentals of teaching the closeout, working on the closeout, building our energy on the defensive end. Um, and then we get to what we call uh, JTSs. So one of the funny things that I, how we, how I found this drill was, you know, was through one of my players. So what we did at Christmas time was I put the players in uh, groups of two or three, and I asked them to present a drill in practice. And if we, if I thought it was good and we could use it, that I would name it after them. So this one was done probably five, six years ago, and it's uh, his nickname was Jake the Snake. <laughs> so we, uh, we use this drill, and it, it talks about max effort, uh, just the mental toughness and the physical toughness. And it's it's one-on-one, -on -one, but this player will start under the hoop and he has five players that he has to defend. And he has to stop each player. So through our, you know, no middle, no offensive rebound, no threes, no layup. So I've seen some players when they, you know, some players get hot on offensively that they've stuck on a guy for six, seven possessions. So on this drill here, it's just one-on-one. -on -one. The offensive player has three dribbles max. And if he gets the offensive rebound, they play, but it's automatic score. And then, uh, you know, he's got – and then they would just rotate to the next spot and then out every player goes through and probably takes about 10 minutes. So our first 15 minutes of practice is one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, building up from one on one, one on oh to one on uh, one on one. And then this is a drill we try to always uh, put our defense at a disadvantage in practice. So we do this usually early just to teach our players about what we say is first help and closeouts and shrinking the floor and, uh, you know, rebounding out of your area. So we, we play. You know, coach starts here with the ball, passes to the top, and then number two can pass to number three, and then we play two on three. So the defense has to get a stop to get out. Um, the offensive players can't cut back door. They have to catch it outside the three-point line, and it's just starting to build on our first help and now our rotations and now rebounding and trying to build some of that toughness. Hey, Coach, quick question about your terminology for your closeout. So someone's yeah. just asking if you can talk about the positioning for the Al – the difference between the Allen, the Wade, and the Rondo as far as positioning. Yeah, so Allen, we're, we're really trying – so in our league, we have some of the best shooters, we believe, uh, in the country. So we're trying to make sure that we're running them off the three-point line, and we want, you know, not more of a square, high hand – Take on usually on if you're on the baseline side here, you're forcing, influencing, and you got to be into them um, pretty close. And we're not so worried um, if that shooter really beats us off the dribble. We're, we're worried, but we're trying. We know that if you hear Allen, there's probably going to be a shot going up or the player is going to get beat. So that's probably, I would say, almost like a half arm's length. And then if you're guarding uh, a Wade, you're one arm's length away. And then a Rondo, you can be, you know, two arm's length away. And we're really can letting them shoot it because we think the percentages, we can live with that. So Allen would be, you know, your half arm's length. You're right into him, almost fully contact. And then a, uh, a Wade would be one, one arm. And then more of a square on uh, on all our closeouts, we're trying to start out square and then influence after um, you get to your player. Not I'm going to close out and angle baseline. It's more squaring them up. Um, 
and, and playing there. So hopefully. Perfect. Yeah, that helps a ton. Thanks. And then on this, we, we talk about six eyes. So again, we want to start our drills with connective, being connected, touching, holding hands. So, and it's working on now our gaps and our closeouts. And we think teams in our league are going to do a good job of putting teams in the closeouts and making them guard. So we have to spend time um, defending that and working on that. So here we just, the three players on the, on the baseline hold hands, coach throws the ball out, and then it's, it's live three-on-three three kick out. You have to catch outside the three-point line. Offensive player has three dribbles max. Um, and what we find is the first time you do this drill, number one here is going to close out to his man. And this, you know, they're able so that in, in practice, um, and then it would translate in games is if we feel our players are hugging their guys a little bit too much, we just have to tell them, hey, six eyes, six eyes. And it's just kind of a reminder from practice to game what we're not doing. So here it would be three on three kick out. The next team is, you know, at the pylons ready to go. And now that point system comes in to play. And they're playing three on three kick out and six eyes is we believe you guard your man and half the ball if you're not on the ball. And if you're on the ball, you're worried about kind of covering the ball. And so our, we would help from the weak side here. So we would stunt, it would be a one way help. So we'd, our position would be in help and then close out. And then number three would help here and number two panic out. And then right away, next rebound, it stopped. If the defense has the, the ball, pass to a coach, another ball's coming in. These guys got to get baseline, hold hands again, a new offense is coming in, and then we're rotating out. Um, you know, if you get to stop, you stay on defense. So all our defensive drills, you want to stay on defense uh, throughout our practice. So this is probably one of my favorite, probably the favorite drill that uh, – that I've been able to do or picked up along the way um, just because I think it, it incorporates everything that we're, we're defensively we can do. So um, it starts on eight eyes again uh, with the four players this time. So what we call eight eyes. So we would play six eyes, four eyes, and then this goes four eyes to four, we call it 45 to transition. So you have four, four guys on offense outside the three-point line, four guys on it, defense on the inside. They would hold hands in the semicircle. And then one offensive player foul line extended on one side of the floor and the other defensive player on the other side of the floor. And then the coach passes the ball, we close out, and then it's live. And what we really like this, this is why we, you know, then this is eight eyes, but then it turns into what we call 45. That's just a drill. I don't know why we called it 45. I think it's just because it starts four on four and then goes to five. And here, so if you get the defensive rebound, you transition out on offense. So now five hat can release and go for a full court layup, but that now means number five on would be the offensive end has to transition back. And now we're working on our transition defense after working on our half court four on four shell, and then now transitioning out. But the, the thing that happens is if we offensive rebound, they would get three points and then this five would come in. So now our defense, the four guys, plus the guy out of bounds, they have to scramble and figure out, is am I going to go pick up that matchup or are we going to switch it? And, and it becomes our communication, I think, is it becomes really good here. And it has to be early. So it goes back to our golden rule. We believe if we communicate and we're constant and we're early, it's going to get, and we have the max effort, we're going to be able to, you know, transition back on defense or match up if they offensive rebound. Just because I like, I want to talk about how we scout and how we do it, because I think it's really important to how we play as well. So we do 45 to transition on everything we're scouting. 
So we, we want to build up that emphasis on building confidence in our players that we can stop actions of different teams that were what they're running and then transition out and score. So we really want to make sure. So throughout the week, what we do here, we'll just start at half. And for this instance, they had a pin down to a ball screen. So we would communicate um, how we're going to defend it. And so in the beginning of the week, on Monday, I would probably come in or Tuesday and say, hey, these are going to be our three options, how we cover it. Number one option is how I think we should cover it. And then number two and three will be our, our backups. And then throughout the week, we're playing, and even in this drill, we'll play five minutes of, say, ball screen coverage is red, white, blue, uh, how we cover all ball screens as colors. So what I found this year, uh, we had a, you know, some veterans, and it was also a new team for me building and I wanted to get us all on the same terminology and building that confidence and that trust that I had trust in them and they had trust in me. So it was more about guys, what do you feel more? These are the three options I'm going to give you and we're going to defend them all week or the first two or three days. And, and whatever they felt more comfortable with and they felt the, like they were empowered and engaged in the decision-making I found it was better for our team that if they want, Hey, I think we can hedge here and it's better for us. And we worked on it all week. That would become our number one option. And then I just think the buy-in was was really good for us. So this is kind of how we did it and all different actions. And then we would transition out um, on, on our scouting. So that's kind of how one thing that I, you know, going to a new team, I, I needed to, you know, build that trust with them and, and, and that buy-in. So I, I wanted them to have a little bit more of a say per se in, you know, what we were doing and how we were doing it and getting everyone on the same page. And then how are we doing for time, Dave? Doing good. You're, you're okay, doing perfect. Good. So uh, the last thing I'll, I'll talk about that I, I thought was really cool for us, um, we started to track um, – stops in a row so three stops in a row would we consider to be one hard hat so you know at the beginning of the year we didn't know how many hard hats we would need to win games so um, going through all our games we found that we needed 11 per game on average to win the game so that was three consecutive stops in a row would give us one hard hat so Going back through, you know, we won eight games this year in our first year there. We found the average number. We needed 11 hard hats. So I think next year or whenever we kind of get back, um, we're going to probably put it, you know, at 12, 13. It also depends if you're playing a top 10 team in the school in the country or you're playing a team lower. You know, but, you know, versus, you know, some of the teams this year, we, we had as high as 16 and then other ones we had nine and, and still, but in all our wins this year in all eight wins, we had an average of 11 hard hats. So it's just something that came out that we, we started to, to work on and, and really emphasize. And even in practice, even in, in games, you, you, you'll hear the bench and our guys, hey, this is two in a row. This is two in a row. Let's get one more. And then it, it's not so much about um, sometimes guys will hang their heads and, oh, we, you know, we gave up a score. But then it's, you know, we come back to our, our timeout and we had a manager this year keep track of it. And he's like, hey, we got two stops here. We need one more to get a strike. Let's get one more. We got that hard hat. So it was kind of they were building on that. And uh, I think it was really good. I think we did a good job of it. So, um, if there's any questions, obviously, thank you. This, anyone has questions or wants anything from me, I'm just happy to, to share and, and present. And, you know, uh, any questions, I'll do my best at answering them. And Yeah, for sure. That was great. There are some people that want your presentation already, so they can just come okay, here and yeah. get a hold of you. Uh, I thought you did a really great job of sharing. And really, you can see your culture. And I love the, some of the culture pieces you built with the hard hat. So where did the inspiration yeah, come from from that one, from the, the hard hat idea? Where did that sort of, where did you start that from? I started from my, my dad. My dad actually, uh, you know, brought it into practice. 
uh, in my first year of coaching when I was at Sioux College and we were about a month into practice and he's like, Thomas, these guys, they don't work hard. Like he, you know, he doesn't know anything about basketball, never played, just always watched me and, uh, and, and, and he brought it in and, and for 16 or 17 years, he sat at the table every day, made sure everyone, he had his book for 17 years of every roster player and he dated it and he checked it off and, um, you know, and he would talk about it, of, you know, just, uh, I think it, and, and everyone's different. And I've seen so many defensive uh, presentations and watching and, I think it just gives us a sense of there's a purpose, not just, Hey, we have this hard hat. And it was something that, you know, I picked up at, uh, you know, home Depot and Hey, we got to, you know, it's, it's, it's something that uh, I truly believe in because my dad was able and my parents were able to provide for me and, you know, and it was all through, you know, their hard work. So it's, uh, it's just something that I think is, it ties us all together. Um, and, you know, brings in that family environment. So it was through my dad, um, you know, because he worked on a farm. He worked construction, um, you know, many years of his life. And, you know, so he's still alive, but he's, you know, he's still still working hard and still ingrained in that. So I try and put that into our players. Very cool. Yeah, I really like it. Uh, asking you, so obviously defensive focus is a big part of you. What, are, what yeah. stats – what numbers or analytics are you looking at? What are those things that you're measuring this by? We're measuring it by, honestly, I'm not a huge analytics guy. Okay. Uh, and maybe I, I should be. Uh, but we're, we're trying to go by, you know, how many strikes, we call it, to get to that hard hat. So we want as many, you know, three stops in a row. And it's, it's game by game. It's, it's kind of practice by practice. And it's not – Hey, I'm going by our analytics. We're going by, Hey, if we even, we count a stop, if we give up that offensive rebound and turn it over. So um, it's more or less game by game and not really going by the analytics of, you know, and probably I should look at the analytics a little bit more since everyone is and everyone's doing that, but uh, it just hasn't been uh, part of me and I haven't gotten into that way, but um so there's not really, it's more, hey, game by game. We're just solely looking at it as singular one game and then trying to build on it, trying to get as many hard hats as we can. Yeah, no, I think it's, like you said, it's got to be a fit for you too. So I Yeah. Uh, exactly. When you work on defense, I think the question is always, how much of it are you doing? You know, you showed some of your drills. Are you doing things like shell drill and these sort of scripted things or are you getting more yeah, reps, so, reps through live play yeah so we're we're always so if we play shell sometimes you know we'll put the ball on the back of a player and it's four on four shell and then it's attack and live and then sometimes it's you know hey you know the player is one step behind and now he's chasing them and we're already at a disadvantage so we're always trying to play we probably play on an hour and a half practice, 45 minutes, we're working on defense and from one-on-one -on -one to two-on-two -two to three-on-three -three to, you know, our coverages. Um, and we're always trying to put the team, the defense at a disadvantage where they have to already have first help because a lot of times, I think a lot of teams first helps are really good, but then it's the second, third helps is when teams really break down so we all it's kind of like forcing the first help to be good it's already good and then now that drop and then the xing out and then now the scramble and that's where you know in some of our clips where you know the guy was able to get middle on us but we able we were able to slide over and I think we've worked on that after you know hey like if he does get middle don't give up on it but it's all you know so much is spent on shell four on four but always trying to put our teams at a disadvantage in practice i like your terminology with the first helper second helper that's something i wrote down for myself i really like oh. <laughs> how specific that is it's it's great terminology uh we'll try to sneak in one or two more uh yeah how much of your so you you talked about your scouting reports your game plan how much is it based on the opponent or is it more based on when we see this type of action we're going to guard it this way or is it if number four is in this action we're running it this way so at first, everything is kind of, we try and go by our base. So, you know, our base is baseline, weak, uh, at the top, you know, influence baseline, first help, second help, 
Then it's, you know, we try and pick on offensive players that where we can give some help from. So it is kind of scout based. So in, in Lakehead, we knew we wanted to get it out of trailer's hands. And if number four was in the game, we were really going to shrink off him and kind of saying, Hey, number four, you're going to shoot the ball over trailer. So it's kind of a little bit of both, but we try and stay, we try and teach the base so that if we cover anybody, it's, this is how we're going to cover a base. And then we, it's easier to make the adjustments of, Hey, we're going to help a little bit off of him or we're going to go under here. So sometimes it's game to game. Sometimes it's weekend to weekend. Uh, it just depends how similar the teams are. So, 